Okay, so uh, let me actually unfreeze. The reading is assigned, so go ahead and go to the front page of Discovery Education. Click on the reading, Formation of Igneous Rocks. We're going to do the exploration, so this is just like all the other explorations we do. Uh, scroll up just a little bit, and you're already on the Explore tab. Click on Explore More Resources. And when it takes you to that page, go all the way to the bottom of Explore More Resources. And you should find the exploration for igneous rocks. And that's what we're doing today. It's not going to be too hard. Uh, we just have a little bit of data to gather um, for two of the questions on the assignment. And the rest we can kind of talk our way through. Um, so to do this, go ahead and click Next. Uh, click Continue. And basically, we have uh, 12 different things that we need to do here on this little section. So we've got a slider here that has slow, medium, fast, instant. And we have a slider right here that selects between the left, the middle, and the right uh, columns. So we're going to do uh, one setting for each of those. So I'm going to start over here on the left, uh, leave it all the way to the left, leave it on slow, and click form. And it's going to show me how the rocks form. This is actually pretty cool. Everybody look at that little box on the left. And what you get to see is how the crystals grow over time in a rock. Um, so remember that. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, the larger a crystal is, the more time it's had to grow, just kind of like a tree. Um, the bigger the tree, the longer it's grown, uh, the older it is. Uh, if I have big, large crystals in my rock, I know that they grew over a very long period of time, and that rock cooled very slowly. Um, if they're small crystals, they're going to form very quickly, and it cooled very quickly. So um, we have slow, and our slider's all the way to the left. You can click location, and it'll show you kind of where you can find rocks like these. Uh, but click reset, move my slider over to medium, hit form, and you're going to see a similar rock form just a little bit faster. So it's going to go through that. Uh, when everything gets done, you can take a look at the location, which is in Yellowstone. And you can go back and click reset, go to fast, and click form. It's going to go through this. So notice your crystals did not get very big. They cooled very quickly. Um, and what kind of location would this be? This would be in California, Long, uh, Long Valley Caldera, California. Last one, hit reset, and go all the way over to instant, and click form. And they're going to form this one. This is going to be obsidian glass. You can tell the video is very short. It cooled very quickly, and you don't have any large uh, minerals inside. And so where would this be? This is going to be the same kind of uh, Long Valley, California location uh, near a volcano. So I can go ahead and go right now to Tracker. And you should have the top four filled in. Um, and what we want to do before we go ahead and go on to the questions is make sure we get all of these filled in because um, that's going to help you answer the questions in just a little bit. So go back to Explore. This time when I reset, drag this little bar to the middle and then go through each four of these. So I've got slow in the middle that I formed. I can go ahead and reset that. I'm going to go to medium in the middle, form that. I can reset that. Go to medium. Fast, form that, reset it, go to medium, instant, form that, reset it. And then we're going to go all the way to the right and go through slow, medium, fast, and instant. So form this, reset, go all the way to the right, go to medium, form that, reset, go all the way to the right, go all the way to fast. Form that, reset it, go all the way to the right, and then all the way to instant form. And now, at this point, yes, you should have all of them filled in, and this is going to help you answer one of the questions uh, later on in the assignment. So let's go ahead and look at the questions and see what we have here. Question number one, describe the main factor that determines the grain size of crystals in an igneous rock. Um, and so we looked over here, and one of the things that they're dividing these up of are coarse grain, medium grain, fine grain. 
And then below it, they have the rate of cooling, slow rate, medium rate, fast rate. So you can see the rate is opposite of the grain size. Um, the larger the grain size, the slower it cooled. The smaller the grain size, the faster it cooled. Um, and so that is actually going to be the number one influence on grain size. Uh, describe the main factor that determines the grain size of crystals, how fast the magma or lava cooled. Um, the faster it cools, the smaller the grain size. The slower it cools, the larger the grain size. That is the main factor that determines grain size. It's cool, how the time it takes for the lava or magma to cool. Um, the faster it cools, the smaller the grain size. The slower it cools, the larger the grain size. Because they have more time to grow. Number two, define the terms felsic and mafic and compare felsic to mafic rocks. Uh, we can come back to the reading for this real quick. Because this one should not be too hard. Just click on number one up here at the top. It takes you to the reading. And we will get down to felsic and mafic pretty quickly, I believe. Right here. So. Define a felsic rock and a mafic rock and tell me the difference. Let's let's go back to this real quick and get the second part. Um, and then compare felsic to mafic rocks. So a felsic rock is composed of feldspar and quartz. Feldspar and quartz. Uh, that's what a felsic rock is made of. A mafic rock contains... Uh, they have a better way to put this. Yeah, I, you don't have to type out this whole thing. I would say a mafic rock contains magnesium and iron. So a felsic rock is composed of feldspar and quartz. A mafic rock contains magnesium and iron. Uh, and compare the two. Felsic rocks are lighter in color. Mafic rocks are darker in color. So those two things. A felsic rock is composed of feldspar and quartz. A mafic rock is composed of magnesium and iron. Uh, the felsic rock is lighter in color. The mafic rock is darker in color. So number three, what are the major minerals in felsic rocks and in mafic igneous rocks? Um, that's kind of the same question. Those are going to be your same minerals. So a felsic rock, your major minerals are going to be feldspar and quartz, which is silicon, but feldspar and quartz. Uh, in a mafic rock, your major minerals are going to be iron and magnesium. Mafic, M-A is magnesium, F-I-C is ferric or iron. Number four, describe the classification of igneous rocks based on the depth at which the magma solidifies. So we had two different terms for that. And if we go back to the reading, we can see these terms. Um, we have intrusive and extrusive. If I can find them, they might be up at the top. Now here they are. Intrusive versus extrusive. Um, intrusive, is that going to form inside the earth or outside the earth? Inside. Intrusive is inside. Extrusive is outside because it's exited the Earth's surface. Um, and so that is, let me go back to the question so we can frame this like they want it. Uh, describe the classification of igneous rocks, igneous rocks based on depth. Um, so intrusive is going to form below the Earth's surface. Extrusive is going to form at the Earth's surface. And that's how we classify them. Intrusive versus extrusive. Um, below the surface for intrusive, at the surface is extrusive. Number four, describe the classification for igneous rocks based on depth. So what they mean is how deep did the rock form? Um, if it's anywhere below the surface, it's intrusive. If it's at the surface, it's extrusive. Intrusive versus extrusive. Now, number five is where doing the work just a second ago is going to pay off. So number five, Classify the following igneous rocks based on the depth at which they form. Um, so we just want to look at these names and figure out how deep they were when they formed. Were they intrusive or were they extrusive? So if we go back up 
to our uh, our chart here, this should actually tell us whether it's going to be intrusive or extrusive. The one to the left is going to be intrusive. It cooled very slow. It's going to cool below the Earth's surface. Um, the ones to the right are going to be more extrusive. So let's actually write down this list. What are, on the question, what are the, the rocks they tell us about? Someone read them off to me. Granite. Granite. Granite, rhyolite. Granite, rhyolite. Or what does it say? Rhyolitic obsidian. Rhyolitic obsidian. All right. Rhyolitic obsidian. Diorite. Diorite. Andesite. Andesite. Olivine de Bruyne. Olivine and Gabro. Basaltic glass. Basaltic glass. And then just regular rhyolite. All right, so basically what they want from us, they want, is it intrusive or extrusive? What kind of depth did it form at? Uh, was it deep under the Earth's surface or was it right at the Earth's surface? So that's what they want, based on depth. Um, if we want to give them depth, we can just say intrusive versus extrusive. Did it cool inside the Earth? Did it cool outside the Earth? And if you go back up to this chart, the stuff to the left should be inside the Earth. The stuff to the right should be outside the Earth or extrusive. So let's go down the list and look at these. Um, granite, where is granite? Right here on the left. So is that inside or outside? Inside, intrusive. So granite should be intrusive. Um, rhyolitic obsidian, all the way over here on the right side. So what is that? Extrusive. So granite, we have intrusive. Uh, rhyolitic obsidian, we have extrusive. Now diorite, where's diorite at? Diorite's going to be right in the middle. Um, it could be, well, actually, we got a coarse grain. We got a medium grain. Uh, let's call it coarse grain. So let's say it's on the left. It's going to be intrusive. So it's over there with the granite. Just a slightly different color. Intrusive. Um, andesite. Yeah, andesite's over here on the right. This is going to be a volcanic rock. That's going to be extrusive. It forms at the surface after that lava has, has spit it out onto the surface of the volcano. So extrusive for andesite, olivine and gabbro. That's gonna be intrusive over here to the left. Uh, basaltic glass, anything that's glass is gonna be way over here to the right. That's gonna be extrusive. And then the last one, rhyolite. Rhyolite is gonna be over here to the right, it's going to be extrusive. So, olivine gabbro was intrusive. Uh, basaltic glass was extrusive. And rhyolite was extrusive. Volcanic glass. Nice. So, that work we did earlier paid off a little bit. Uh, number six, define the term phenocryst um, and explain the relationship between the size of a phenocryst and the solidification rate of the magma. So let's go back to the reading to define the term phenocryst. Um, it's essentially going to be a crystal. I want to see if they got a better term for phenocryst, if it's even here. Let's see. Come up to the top. I maybe should have searched it. <clears throat> For the word phenocris. Somebody on your reading page, uh, search the term phenocris so we can find it in here. Or don't. Do whatever you want to do. Fine. Yeah. What are we looking at? Well, uh, here it is, phenocryst. So, 
Uh, a phenocris is going to be like a small piece of mineral inside of a larger rock. Let's see. Uh, do they give us a definition here? I don't know that they do. A porphyry is an igneous rock composed of large mineral glass called phenocris. So yeah, uh, large mineral grains is what a, a phenocris is going to be. Specifically, I would say a phenocris is a large grain of mineral or a large crystal of mineral within a larger rock. Um, so a crystal mineral piece inside a larger rock is a phenocris. And just like we saw in the lab, the, the second part of the question is um, explain the relationship between the size of a phenocryst and the solidification rate of the magma. And we saw that with the rocks as they were pooling. Um, the larger the crystal, the slower that magma cooled. It cooled over a very long period of time, very slowly. Um, so that relates the size to the solidification rate. The larger the crystal, the slower that magma cooled over a long period of time. Um, the smaller the crystal, the faster the magma cooled over a short period of time. So make sure you have the definition of a phenocryst, a mineral crystal inside of a larger rock, um, and explain that relationship. The larger a crystal or phenocryst, the slower the cooling and the more time it took for that mineral to grow. And then the opposite, the smaller the crystal, the quicker it cooled uh, over a short period of time, so it didn't have very much time to grow. Okay, uh, describe three factors that influence how an igneous rock is classified. So we have three different things here. Um, we have crystal size, so the size of the crystals inside of the rock. Um, we have composition, so what types of minerals are inside the rock, which is also kind of going to be color. Um, and actually, let's go back up because that's what we have here. So we have uh, the, the types of minerals, which is the color. We have the size of the crystals here. Um, and then I guess the last thing, we're saying three things, texture, depth, color. Well, depth kind of has to do with texture too. Uh, let's see, what am I missing? I think I'm just not thinking about it correctly. So we have textures, we have intrusive versus extra plutons, no, 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 no. Textures, classifying igneous rocks, composition and texture. I think it's just those two. But it says three. So I would just leave it there. Composition and textures is, is what we use. There's not, I mean, you can make up a third thing, but it's not really different than what we were doing before. So uh, describe the three factors that influence how an igneous rock is classified, uh, the composition and the texture. Uh, and I guess if you wanted to throw in like intrusive versus extrusive or cooling rate or whatever, but that goes back to texture. So uh, should be the same thing. Now, number eight, uh, this exploration covers 13 igneous rocks, lists some other igneous rocks along with their essential uh, minerals. So just find one other igneous rock that's not on this list up here. Um, so they have lots of different rocks up here. There's 12 of them. Uh, find an extra rock that's not on this list and tell me what kind of minerals are inside of it. Um, well, that's not a rock, though. That's a mineral itself. So. Uh, but yeah, just Google search igneous rocks and find something uh, that's an igneous rock that's not on this list and tell me a little bit about it. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. 13, so number nine, identify the three main types of magma and describe the chemical composition of each. So our three main types of magma are going to be these three right here. Um, felsic, intermediate, and mafic. Um, felsic, intermediate, and mafic. And we need what kind of minerals are inside of each of those. So let's go back to the reading. And let's get our three different types and look at the minerals that are inside of them. So we've kind of already done this on other ones, but we can go ahead and do it. 
Uh, Felsic is going to have Feldspar and Quartz. Mafic Rocks are going to have, uh, you can just list some of these that are here, Pyroxene, Olivine, Plagioclase from Mafic Rocks. So these are actually your minerals now instead of just your elements. Pyroxene, Olivine, Plagioclase from Mafic Rocks. And then Intermediate is going to have a mix of both. It's going to have minerals from Felsic Rocks and Mafic Minerals, um, and then they're going to be mixed equally. So just write that Intermediate is a mix of both uh, felsic and mafic. So those are your three. Felsic, mafic, intermediate. Uh, felsic will have feldspar and quartz. Mafic will have pyroxene, olivine, and plagioclase. And intermediate will be a mix of both of those. Uh, your warm porridge, if you will. Then number 10, name the igneous rocks associated with the following... Uh, geological features. So they have these four listed right here. Um, you can probably find these in the the exploration work that we did, um, but I, you can also just Google. Um, so Google Columbia River Igneous Province and find out what kind of igneous rocks are there. Um, without even guessing, the A is probably going to be like a basalt. Um, and then Google the rest of the stuff. Coast Range, Batholith, uh, Mount Rushmore, Mount Erie, Mount Rainier, and tell me what type of rocks make up these uh, places that we go on vacation at sometimes. So uh, that'll be the last one. If you have any questions, let me know. If you want me to help you find an answer, I will help you find an answer. Uh, if you're at home, just send me an email. If you're here in class, let me know or come in during activity period. Um, make sure when you get done to hit submit. Um, even if you didn't answer every single question, turn in what you got so I can grade it. Uh, get you a grade in the grade book. So uh, that's it for today. If you would like to make up any past assignments, if you were absent or uh, remote or whatever, come in during activity period and let me know, and I will open them back up for you. And everybody have a wonderful day.